Movie about Seoul Ferry opens in Germany. Koreans in Germany open their yellow umbrellas. Murals and public bathhouses. Teen overcomes ADHD with Taekwondo. Youth soccer team dreams of the big leagues. Hello, welcome to Going Global. I'm your host, Chong Sammy. While the development of artificial intelligence gains steam across the world, a patrolling robot has been deployed in a train station in China. The robot is capable of facial recognition, and if it detects fugitives in the wanted list, it will automatically notify the police for arrest. The robot is also capable of keeping track of pollution and humidity levels, as well as temperature, and will notify relevant authorities if there are any anomalies. Without doubt, we will see more AI robots in our everyday surroundings doing all kinds of tasks for us in the near future. On that note, let's turn to our first story of the day. More than 1,000 days have passed since the sinking of the Seolho ferry, and it will soon be exactly three years. A Korean in Germany put together a movie to share their stories and screened it in Munich. Let's find out more. The school-age girls are filled with unbridled joy. They are like flowers blooming in spring. The bus carrying these excited students on their field trip enter a long tunnel. But the bus that arrives at Pengmok Harbor is empty. Only the parents remain, hoping to recover their children's belongings. This is a documentary movie, Sewar which follows the families of the Sewerho Ferry disaster's victims. Director Jung Wook Ki works as a freelance journalist for a well-known German newspaper. She made this movie because she couldn't find the words to express the pain felt by the families. Jung first met the surviving families in June 2014, two months after the sinking, and began logging their stories. She worked on the movie for almost three years before officially releasing it with German subtitles. I find it very beklemmend. Ich kann mir schwer vorstellen, dass so etwas passieren kann in dieser Art. The surviving parents tell their stories while maintaining their composure. 앞으로 뭐를 해야 될 것인가 생각을 해보긴 하는데 할게 없어요. 할 필요도 없고 돈 벌면 뭐할 것이고 그걸 누구 위해서 누구를 위해서 돈을 벌겠어요. 아침에 눈 떴을 때가 제일 힘들어요. 저녁에 잠은 그냥 지쳐서 자는데 아침에 눈을 딱 떴을 때 응. 상실감 같은 거죠. 이렇게 못 일어나겠어요. 막 일어나야 돼. 들고 일어나 버려야 되는데 못 일어나고. What message does Chung, who is not a formally trained movie director, wish to convey to the audience? Staying in Germany for our next story. Over in Frankfurt, Koreans have gathered to rally for the surviving family members of the Seoho Ferry's victims. Remembering the victims may be the least we can do for them. Let's take a closer look. 
A group of people gather in downtown Frankfurt, Germany. One by one, they open yellow umbrellas and form the word why in Korean. Why were they told to stay put? Why weren't they rescued? Why is the ferry not being lifted? There are many questions still pounding on the sunken Sewerho ferry. This past winter has been exceptionally cold. The attendants call out the names of the victims who have yet to be recovered from the even colder water. What kind of country did they dream of? It is up to the living to answer that question. 2014년 4월 16일부터 2017년까지 지금까지 변한 것은 없습니다. 다시금 세월호 인양, 세월호 진상 규명, 그리고 세월호 특별법을 다시금 개정하면서 여전히 잊지 않고 기억하기 위해 이 자리에 모였습니다. The truth still resides at the bottom of the sea. Koreans abroad will continue holding rallies until the truth is uncovered. Our next story takes us to Japan. Japan has a long history of public bathhouses, and there are also artists who specialize in murals within the bathhouses. The only female artist in this field is working full-time painting the walls of bathhouses. Let's find out more. Mizuki Tanaka is on a ladder painting Mount Fuji on the wall. This is no other than a public bathhouse. She is one of Japan's three public bathhouse mural artists, the sole female artist, and the only one in her 30s. Murals in public bathhouses first appeared in 1912. One bathhouse owner thought that murals would make the visits fun even for children. During the 1960s, when public bathhouses were in a boom, mural artists were in high demand. However, as residences improved and private bathing facilities became more commonplace, the number of mural artists dwindled. Tanaka regrets that this long tradition of unwinding in a hot bath at the end of the day is disappearing. The other two public bathhouse mural artists are in their 70s and 80s. They have decades of experience and are still active in the field. These artists do not paint the same murals in the men's and women's sides. Instead, they try to create what would make up a single piece of painting when combined. Elderly residents who visit public bathhouses every day are saddened by the shrinking number of public baths. Although times have changed, it's still a pleasure to take a long hot bath at the end of the day and enjoy art at the same time. The few active public bathhouse mural artists are busy decorating empty walls while protecting the value of their profession. Moving on to our next story. There is an adolescent in New Zealand who was able to overcome ADHD with the help of Taekwondo. How did Taekwondo help him? Let's take a closer look. From kicks to Pumze. 16 year old Alice Dare McNair stands out among other Taekwondo practitioners. 
McNair has a special story to tell about his personal struggles. I definitely think Taekwondo for because I'm I've got uh, autism and uh, traits of ADHD, which both make it hard to socialize and hard to concentrate. And Taekwondo's help with both of those. Ever since he was a young boy, he was prone to distraction, and severe anxiety made it hard for him to make friends. His mother took him to a Taekwondo class, but he was often kicked out. He started Taekwondo when he was five years old. First club he was banned from because his behavior was so poor. Through Taekwondo, Alistair has learned to make friends. Um, he's had challenging difficulties since he was a little boy. As McNair became better at Taekwondo, the martial art became his closest companion. The strict rules and etiquette of Taekwondo taught him self-control, and his relationships with others improved. Now, he's grown up a lot, he's very mature, he will be patient and listen to other people when we're trying to help him out. He will also help other people, which is obviously very good. He's been practicing Taekwondo for 11 years now. He's the oldest athlete of the 13-member Black Belt Demonstration Team. He hopes that others who have similar disorders will seek treatment through Taekwondo. I think that's a big thing, because for, for children with autism like me, I feel like if I didn't have, if I wasn't able to let out the, the repressed stress, then it would really get to me. And I think that's been a major thing, being able to let out that stress. It's time for our last story today. There is a Korean youth soccer team in Montgomery, Alabama State that has made a name for itself at the national level. The soccer players and the team have been making remarkable achievements. What's their secret? Let's find out now. It's another practice session for young soccer players. From shooting to personal skills, they already look like professionals. They are members of the youth soccer team UMA based in Montgomery, Alabama. The team founded in May of 2015 has racked up many achievements. In December of last year, UMA won the regional championships participated by teams from six different states. In 2015, UMA came in second place in the national championships featuring teams from all over the United States. The key to their achievements lies in the Korean-style physical conditioning that the athletes go through. They spend more than 80% of their overall training time on running and physical conditioning. In the United States, we have a lot of people who are living in the United States. We have a lot of people who are Fourth grade student Park Mino is a great asset for the team. Park started playing at the age of four and has racked up seven goals in four matches. He will join the U.S. team that will take part in an international youth soccer competition in Italy in April. While watching Korean soccer players whom Pak considers his role models, he is nurturing dreams of becoming a professional soccer player. UMA has come far since its beginning as a neighborhood soccer club, and the team now also has non-Korean members. Good luck to these future star soccer players.
I hope you enjoyed today's stories on Going Global. A toddler who was diagnosed with leukemia shortly after birth and cured by a groundbreaking treatment method recently celebrated her second birthday as a healthy girl. Lila was diagnosed when she was 14 weeks old and after exhausting all conventional options, scientists created what are called designer immune cells, customized immune cells meant to combat leukemia through genetic engineering. She was the first ever documented human subject for the treatment. And now, doctors have declared her completely healthy. The field of medicine has definitely come far, but there are still many diseases that evade all treatment efforts. The news of medical breakthroughs, like those that saved Lila, gives us hope that we will see effective treatments for even the trickiest diseases in the near future. Now going global, we'll be back next week with more exciting and interesting stories from all around the world. Thank you for watching.